So welcome, so glad that you are connecting with us. Uh, maybe you stumbled along this, maybe one of your friends or family members shared this with you. I just wanna give you the heads up. This is the podcast, this is the message only version. If, if you want the full service with prayers and with announcements and welcome um, and music, there's another link, go back to the YouTube page and you can check that entire service out. But we are so glad that you are connecting with us. One of the realities is that we wanna connect more with you. And so if you have questions or you want to know what, what are some other ways that, that you could get connected, then send Leah an email and we'll be able to touch base with you. Now on to the message. Welcome. Uh, great that you're joining us again uh, this week. We're actually wrapping up a series that has lasted the last number of months, uh, The Words of James. And starting next week, uh, we're going to begin a new series, our, our summer series, Big, bold questions. We're, we're going to look at questions around life, questions uh, around faith, uh, perhaps questions you have wondered about or, or questions that people have asked you. Uh, there's still some time. And so if you do have a question that you would like uh, us to address or talk through, if you send me an email, um, I guarantee that I will respond to you, maybe not necessarily in the series, but at least through email or conversation that way. But we would love to hear from you. We would love to continue to uh, engage with you. So, so send me an email and we can uh, move forward with that. But today, um, we're going to wrap up this series on James. And if you're just joining us, uh, James is, is the half-brother of Jesus. He's, he's one of the great leaders of the early church. And in his portion that he contributes to the Bible, he essentially is working out practically. What does it look like to have faith in Jesus? What does it look like in dealing with hardships or temptations? How, how does our faith impact our decisions? How, how does our faith deal with our anger or in the words we speak? And so fittingly, James in this final portion really adds one key ingredient that if I was to go back to every other conversation, I would want to weave this piece in as well as it really stands as such a significant foundation that when it comes to our faith, when it comes to our relationship with Jesus, this is a key piece. I'm sure you'll pick up on it right away. So let's, let's jump right in. Uh, we're going to read James chapter 5, beginning in verse 13. This is what James says. Are any of you suffering hardships? You should pray. Are any of you happy? You should sing praises. Are any of you sick? You should call the elders of the church to come and pray over you, anointing you with oil in the name of the Lord. Such a prayer offered in faith will heal the sick, and the Lord will make you well. And if you have committed any sins, you will be forgiven. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other, so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. Elijah was a human as we are, and yet when he prayed earnestly that no rain would fall, none fell for three and a half years. Then, when he prayed again, the sky sent down rain, and the earth began to yield its crops. No, no real secret there, is it? For James, one of the key ingredients to faith, one of the key ingredients to living life with Jesus is prayer. He, he actually mentions it seven times. Now, I don't know what, what your approach to prayer is. Uh, for some, I think they may underestimate it, wondering, you know, what, what difference does it really make? I mean, really, is, is God really going to do anything if I simply pray to him? On the flip side, I think sometimes people overcomplicate it. They, they, they worry about, well, where, where am I going to pray? Or what is the posture when I pray? Or what should I say when I pray? For me, my best understanding of prayer is conversation with God. And when you think about what God wants ultimately from us is a relationship with him, you start to realize how important prayer is. Because think of any significant relationship you have with someone else. If you're not talking, it's hard for that relationship to grow and to develop. And that is so true when it comes to our relationship with God. 
And so today I want to I want to jump into this this element of of prayer and and get real practical as to what it begins to look like. And in many ways the the key verse the the key phrase that James says that I really want to just hone in on is when he says this. An earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. James says conversations with God need to be earnest. What does that mean? It it means they they need to be sincere. They they need to come from the heart. We're we're not just kind of flippant about what we say, or we don't kind of have a conversation in a way that it doesn't really matter. I mean, have you ever had a conversation with someone where you don't actually believe what it is they're saying to you, or it doesn't seem like they actually even care about having a conversation? They're just kind of biding time or having small talk. James is like, listen, when you have a conversation with God, be earnest, be be sincere, be, be thoughtful about what you say. The second thing he says is when it comes to conversations with God is, is it, 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 it's about righteous individuals. Now, now that is a word that can oftentimes be misunderstood. Righteous simply means someone who's desiring to live in a way that is honoring to God, which actually makes perfect sense. Like if you're wanting to have a relationship with God, then, then you're wanting to live in a way that is honoring to him. And so our prayers, our, our conversations are around how do you live in a way that is ultimately honoring to God? And then there's that, that final phrase. He says, for prayer has great power and produces wonderful results. If I was to paraphrase James, it's this. Prayer makes a difference. Shockingly, eh? Like when we talk to God, something begins to happen. There's incredible power. It starts to produce great results. And so I hope we start to see and understand that let's not overcomplicate prayer, but let's also not underestimate prayer. That if we start to understand God as our heavenly father, that in the same way that I am a father to my children, I I want to have conversations with them and I want them to talk to me in the very same way that God wants to talk to us and have us talk to him. And so today in our time, I I want to break down kind of three different types of conversations that that James highlights in this passage. Now, I realize, I realize there's many other conversations we can have, but but let's just focus on these three so that our conversations, our, our prayers with God become a regular part of who we are. So what's the first conversation? Well, James jumps right into it. He says, are you happy? You should sing praises. One of the very first conversations that we have with God are our prayers of praise, a way of giving thanks. I know that for me as a dad, one of the things that brings me greatest delight is when my kids come home with good news, when they are thankful, when they are grateful, when they are filled with joy about something that has happened, when they thank me for something I have done, it, it just fills my heart. And, and so how much more true is that of God? That how often do we take for granted too many of the good things that God gives to us? And so maybe a great place to start is when we think of prayer, when we think of, of conversations, we just offer Words of praise. Because praise does some incredible things. It, it produces great results. It, it makes us more grateful. It, it focuses us upon the good things that God has given to us. And you know what else it does? When we praise God more and more, it takes our focus off of comparison and jealousy because we realize the incredible gifts that God has given to us. And so maybe a starting point is Take time to offer praise to God. And listen, it doesn't simply have to be when you come to church. It can be out for a walk in beautiful nature. It can be driving in your car as you recollect many of the good things that have been happening. I love what James says, sing praises to God. Have you ever considered that one of the primary ways that we can pray is through song? That's why we have hymns. That's why we have music. Is It's an opportunity to praise God. So hey, listen. I know you are creative. I know you have opportunities. And, and so don't, don't worry about, you know, when do I have to do it or what are the right words to say? Just look for opportunities, short moments to have conversations with God when you praise him. 
when you give thanks to him. Second conversation that James jumps us into about prayer is when he says, are any of you suffering hardships? You should pray. Are any of you sick? You should call for the elders of the church to come and pray over you. The second category of prayer, of conversation for me, would be that of request. Those times where we ask specifically of God. Now, I know... <laughs> Maybe for some of you, you're like, I, I don't know if, if I can do that or if I should do that. Listen up, listen up. The Bible tells us repeatedly that we are to make requests of God. James actually earlier in James 4 verse 2, he says, you don't receive because you don't ask. Now, I get it. Sometimes for some of us, we may be on the other side where we may be having too many conversations where it's all just about the asking of God. But we need to understand that God delights to give good things to his people. And so are we making the ask? In the very same way that, that as a parent, when, when, when my child comes to me, when my kids come to me, I, I want to know what their needs are. Now, God understands what we need even before we ask. But it brings us back to that place of conversation, that, that place of intimacy, that, that reality of having an actual conversation with God. And so let me offer you a few suggestions that, that kind of help me when it, when it comes to, to prayer and, and making requests. The first thing is to be specific. I think a lot of times, one of the challenges is that we are too general in our ass. I love what James says, be earnest. Earnest means not only be sincere, but have a purpose. And then he talks about uh, the prophet Elijah. He's a prophet in the Old Testament. If you want to look him up, it's in 1 Kings verse chapter 17. And what I love about James using Elijah is that Elijah was specific. He, he was a prophet that was being used by God to bring the judgment onto the land. And Elijah prayed specifically for no rain. And it didn't rain for three and a half years. That would have been a tough time. But then at the end of it, he then prayed for rain and rain immediately came. You know, I think sometimes we may think God is not answering our prayers. But I wonder if at times the problem isn't that God isn't answering, but that we are so general that we wouldn't even know what an answered prayer would look like in the first place. I mean, oftentimes we... We may fall into the, the Christian language of, you know, well, well, God just bless us or bless this person. What, what exactly does that mean? What exactly are you asking of God? I mean, take a moment. When you start to uh, evaluate your prayers, your conversations, can you honestly tell yourself how that prayer would look if it was actually answered? Second thing that I do to kind of help me out when it comes to making requests is actually write them down. Um, I have a bunch of journals like this. This is my most recent one. And this is where I, I write down oftentimes the things that I'm praying about. And it does a couple of things. One is it helps me be specific. But number two, it allows me to go back and to see how God has been faithful in the midst of my life through weeks, through months, through years. And, and it is amazing to see how God has worked in the midst of these circumstances. But when it comes to requests, there's, there's always sometimes maybe that, that elephant in the room. And that's simply, well, what about unanswered prayer? Which I don't actually think is the right way to go. You see, God answers our prayers. It's either a yes, it's a no, or it's a not yet wait. I think a lot of times we, we fall into this trap of thinking, well, is there some sort of formula you know, that if I, if I pray earnestly enough or if I pray over and over and over again, that God will automatically grant my request? No, it doesn't work that way. In the same way that just because my kids come and ask me of something, they're free to ask, but I'm free to respond. Sometimes it's a yes, sometimes it's a no, sometimes it's a, I'm going to think about this and get back to you. I think one of the greatest dangers we make is that when we don't get the response we were looking for, we think that either we have offended God or, or God isn't listening. But the reality is, 
is that oftentimes prayers get answered in a variety of ways. Uh, let me just give you a couple of examples from the Bible. Uh, the Apostle Paul, um, he was a contemporary of James. In, in one moment in his life, he was being tormented by what we're told is a thorn in the flesh. We have no idea if it was physical, if it was spiritual, if it was emotional. But three times he asked Jesus to remove this thorn. You know what Jesus said? No, not going to do it. But my grace is sufficient for you. Even better example, Jesus himself in speaking to the Father on the night before he was about to be crucified. In, 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 a, in a sense of just absolute agony, he went to the Father and says, if there's any other way than going to the cross, let it be done. Well, Jesus went to the cross. So clearly that was an unanswered prayer. But Jesus said something significant. He says, yet Father, not my will, but your will be done. That is an amazing posture when it comes to our conversations. 100% make the specific ask of God, but always do it in the posture of recognizing it's not my will, it's your will be done. Because prayer is powerful and it produces wonderful results. And the reality that I see in my life is oftentimes the wonderful result is not what God does around me, but rather what God does in me. And when we take that posture, we begin to see some incredible things. I was thinking as I was preparing this message that I'd be doing a real disservice to the words of James if I just simply sat here and told you about prayer and not actually took a moment to pause to pray. And so what I want to do is just pray right now for all of you. And we're going we're gonna to look at this element of just how do we make a request of God? Maybe there's something specific that you want to offer to God. And so I'm just going to, I'm going to close my eyes. There's going to be a moment of silence and I'm just going to allow you to think specifically. Is there something you want to ask of God? Be specific. And then I'm going to pray. Let's do this together. And so Lord Jesus, as you hear these prayers that are being offered to you, either in words or in silence, God. We know that you are a God who cares and loves for us. That you are a good Father who, who, who delights in hearing from us. And I just pray that as we offer you these, our requests, that we understand that you not only hear them, but that you are responding to them. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that, that we would be in a place where we'd be open to see your will done. For we ask it in your name. Amen. This week, I was wanting to put into practice some of the things that I was talking about. And I was contemplating having a conversation, which, which I knew was going to be a difficult conversation. And so the last number of days, I have been asking God, you know, give me clarity. Should I approach this individual with, with whom I, I want to talk to? Or should I just let the issue go? I haven't had an answer yet. Uh, I'm going to continue to pray. I'm going to continue to see what, what God is going to do. And I'd encourage you to do the same. Whatever it is you are asking of God, continue to ask of him, but be open to how he is going to work in your life. Which lands us on the, the third conversation that I believe James begins to unpack. And, and for many people, this is perhaps one of the hardest conversations uh, the conversation we probably like to have the least. It's a conversation of confession. James says this, Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. As a dad, one of the realities you realize is that your kids mess up. One of the other realities is oftentimes they don't like to admit when they mess up. Hey, listen, I, I remember when I was a kid. I know still now when I, when I mess up and I have to own up to Rebecca or, or other people that I have hurt, that's not a conversation. I'm like, yes, yes, I can't wait to mess up again because I just love those conversations. But they're important ones to have because sin is a part of life. Brokenness in the midst of this world. And, and oftentimes what I realize is that when we mess up, we, we want to ignore it. 
we want to downplay it. We almost want to distance ourselves from the person that we may have offended. And what does it do? It it does nothing good. It brings a greater sense of guilt, of, of, of shame. It, it, it hurts a relationship. And I'm sure we all know that when we have those hard conversations, it, it begins to rebuild the relationship. How much more so is that true with God? That when we come to him, we, we own what we have done. You see, James reminds us of this incredible reality is that we will be forgiven. James says prayer is powerful and produces wonderful results. One of the greatest results of prayer when we confess our sin is experiencing the grace and forgiveness. Allowing the guilt and the shame to be removed. Being able to, to, again, have that sense of relationship with God. Because too often we, we want to step away from God. We, 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 we don't want to think about it. And we distance ourselves and get further and further and further away. Now, one of the practices of the early church was what they'd refer to as the prayer of examine. Of, of just being intentional about recognizing the, the ways that we have stepped outside of God's will. And, and just doing that on a regular basis. And even on the days where we think we've kind of knocked it out of the park and nothing's gone wrong, still taking the moment to say, God, like, are there things in my life that I need to come clean on? Things in my life that perhaps I have offended you? And then realize that it is a way for us to receive forgiveness. Again, this week, I was in a circumstance where I was incredibly angry at an individual because of what they had done to someone who I care a lot about. And, and as I heard the story unfold and, and get deeper and deeper, I, I could see my sense of anger and frustration just growing. And, and I wanted to, to kind of lash out. And in the midst of this, the following day, it's like the Holy Spirit came alongside and was like, I realize what the other person has done is not cool. But you acting like you were about to act is also not honoring to God. And I started to realize it. And so I confessed it. I, I, I owned it. And something amazing started to happen. The, the sense of anger that I felt towards the other individual began to dissipate. It wasn't as severe as I experienced the grace of God in my own life. Asking for forgiveness is oftentimes not easy, but it is likely one of the most important things we can do in life. And so again, we're going to pause. And, and maybe there's something that you need to come clean with God about. Or maybe nothing comes to mind. Use this time as an opportunity just to allow God to speak into your life. To simply be open. And so, let me pray. Lord Jesus, again, we give thanks that you are the God who loves us and cares for us. The God who is full of compassion and grace. And so now, Jesus, uh, from our homes, from our living rooms, from wherever we are watching this, we want to confess to you that the sin that is tripping us up, the sin that is getting in the way of our relationship with others and even more importantly, our relationship with you. And so Jesus, we thank you for your grace, your mercy, your forgiveness. Amen. I hope you know that that conversation you just had with God is powerful. It produces wonderful results. It begins to remove the guilt and the shame that you have likely carried for too long. Know the reality that the Bible tells us that, that, that God is faithful, that God is just, that when we confess our sins, he will, will forgive. I don't know about you, but that's a conversation I think I want to have more often. 
So what's our takeaway? I hope this week, forget that, scratch that. I hope today you begin to see greater opportunities to have conversations with God, to talk to him about what's going on. Now, I realize some of you that are watching, this this may be all kind of new to you. This, this may be kind of foreign to you. And you're like, man, this seems kind of awkward. I don't I don't know what to say. I'm getting all nervous. What if I say something wrong? Listen, I totally get it. I totally get it. I remember when I first started dating Rebecca, now my wife. The first couple of times we went out on a date, man, I was nervous. I was not the slick guy you see before you right now. I was wondering, okay, I'm going to have this conversation. I'm going to talk about this. I, I didn't want to say the wrong thing. I, I didn't want to come across like, like, like a, an idiot or whatever. And we managed to, to buckle through those first few dates. But you know what happened? The more we talked, the more natural it became. It wasn't so scripted. It wasn't so, well, what are we going to talk about? It just flowed naturally. And now I, I can't even imagine a day of not talking with Rebecca, of not having conversations, about just simply sharing what is going on. I believe the very same thing is true when it comes to our relationship with God. It, it might be awkward at first, but let's not overthink it. Have these normal conversations with Jesus. Tell him the things that you're thankful for. Tell him the things that that you need him to step into for you. Tell him the things that you are sorry about. And and just allow those to begin to be the conversations. The second thing I'd say is maybe for some of us, we have to realize that, that our conversations with God, there needs to be variety. If If we are only ever asking things from him, we may want to praise a little bit more. We, we may want to confess a little bit more because I realized that with my kids, if they only spoke to me when they wanted something from me, that's going to kind of rub me the wrong way, right? And, and it speaks the reality of the relationship. And so look for opportunities to talk with God because prayer is powerful and it produces wonderful results. And what I'm convinced of is that prayer is less about God changing the circumstances around us and becomes more about changing us within. James says, earnest prayer of a righteous person is great and produces wonderful results. To paraphrase, prayer makes a difference in your life. So why not, why not start today? Have a conversation with God and then see where it leads. Thanks for joining us this week. Just before you go, let me just offer you this blessing. Now may God bless you. Now may the love of Christ surround you. Now may the peace of the Holy Spirit fill you so that in all that you do, you keep your eyes focused on Jesus and live life in a way that honors him. Have a great week.